All right, I think I've got the all clear to get started here. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name's Cole Walker. I'm a developer with Wind River and a contributor to uh, Starling X. My talk today is uh, full featured PTP in the cloud for telcos. So a quick agenda, we're gonna just look at some of the uh, PTP functionality in Starling X. Then we're gonna take a look at an example topology and dive into how that's configured on a Starling X system. And then we're gonna take a look at some of the monitoring and uh, alarming features that Starling X offers to help uh, applications and users uh, manage the, the accuracy of the timing on their system. So uh, I was gonna start with a precision time protocol joke, but um, I knew that the timing had to be perfect, so I wasn't sure where to fit it in. Um, so precision time protocol is an IEEE standard uh, used for sub-microsecond uh, accuracy on, on clocks. Uh, it's really useful for uh, edge, edge cloud uh, applications because it can be run on uh, generic hardware. Uh, it provides a best master clock algorithm that uh, allows for a degree of redundancy and failover if clock sources are lost, and there's very low bandwidth requirements. Uh, in specific uh, 5G applications, um, the sub-microsecond accuracy is essential for smooth handoffs between different cell sites, and um, there's a movement in the 5G space towards open RAN deployments, which the off-the-shelf hardware is, is very useful for. And specifically, some of the the good features that Starling X uh, helps out with is it supports uh, TGM, TBC, and ordinary clock types, which are all different uh, types of uh, PTP clocks. And Starling X also uses its CollectD tool to set various parameters that are expected in, in PTP messages, um, something that uh, the open source Linux PTP project doesn't, uh, doesn't provide on its own, but we're gonna get into that a little more. So there's a lot going on in this topology here. We're gonna break it down over the next few slides and kind of build it back up. But what you're looking at is a Starling X uh, simplex all-in-one node with two NICs. And there's a whole bunch of different components going on here that are related to how you keep the system timing in sync. So in Starling X, the core of the, the PTP work all comes from the Linux PTP project, and that there's a number of, uh, of programs in there that work together. There's TS2PHC, which is used to pull timing information from GNSS timestamps. So you connect an antenna into your NIC, and you're able to use that as a primary reference time clock. Uh, PHC2Sys, which is used to synchronize the actual system time on, on your device uh, from, the, from the NIC itself and then PTP4L, which is used to distribute timing information over the network so that other nodes in the area can, can receive accurate timing from your master node in this case. So what Starling X provides is various CLIs for configuring all of these services, along with monitoring and alarming, uh, as well as a REST API that um, containerized applications can query to learn about the sync state of the system. So let's walk through how we would set up PTP on a Starling X node. Uh, in this case, we're gonna be configuring a, a TGM, so a, a grandmaster node that would be serving time to, to other nodes in its area. So the first step, uh, we've got a GNSS antenna on the right side there that's uh, plugged into NIC number two. So there's gonna be timestamps coming in from that, and we're gonna use the TS2PHC application to read those timestamps and synchronize the PHCs, which are the primary hardware clocks. In this case, case, each NIC has one primary hardware clock. Um, you can see on the bottom here, I've got configuration examples as to how this would be done via Starling X CLIs. I'm not gonna go into to great detail on how that works, but um, at a high level for all of these services, you create an instance of the specific instance type. Uh, you add various parameters, which would be things that you would read from the, uh, the man page for TS2PHC, you would supply whatever parameters you're, you're planning on using. Uh, then you would assign interfaces on the, on the NICs that you want to associate to that instance. And then you would map the, that instance to a host. So on a multi-node system, for example, you could have uh, different configurations per node. And uh, that's often necessary in some more uh, complicated deployments. So now that we've got 
timestamps coming in from GPS, and the physical hardware clocks on each NIC are now synced to that. So they're reading the same time as the, as the GP GNSS signal that comes in. Uh, the next thing we want to do is frequency lock those NICs together. Um, and in this example, uh, this is an Intel E810 NIC uh, would be uh, one of the types of hardware that, that, that supports this. So they have SMA ports that can be uh, connected from one NIC to another, and you can daisy chain them across multiple NICs. And in Starling X, you configure a clock instance type, and that allows you to transmit uh, a one pulse per second signal from, in this example, from NIC two over to uh, NIC one. And that makes sure that uh, the PHCs on each NIC are going tick tock, tick tock at exactly the same frequency and are locked in with each other. That's going to help make sure that the timing is as accurate as possible. So once we've got the GNSS signal coming in, the next frequency locked, the next step is, of course, to set the system clock, which is what most applications running on the system are going to actually care about. So in this case, we're going to use PHC2Sys, which uh, is very simple. We would just provide it with uh, which of the primary hardware clocks, the, which of the PHCs we want to pull the time from. And PHC2Sys takes that and just disciplines the system clock to keep it locked to that. So now we've got a system clock that's uh, completely locked in with the PHC, which is completely locked in with the GNSS signal. And we can move on to actually deploying PTP4L, which is the PTP part that, uh, that we're here to talk about. So once we have all that, now we've added a whole bunch to the diagram here. You can see each NIC has uh, several ports on it that are all connected to downstream nodes. Um, in a 5G deployment, these would probably be radio units, so things that are controlling the, uh, the 5G signal, and they need accurate timing. So you would create, uh, in Starling X, you can create multiple PTP4L instances. One per NIC is recommended for uh, best performance. And you can provide whatever parameters you need. PTP4L is highly tunable, so it depends on your environment as to how exactly you would set up and configure those. Um, and once that's all configured, you have the, uh, the interfaces on NIC1 and NIC2 that are serving as, as timing masters, and they are sending time over, uh, over Ethernet down to the RU units. And those units are then having their clocks synced to uh, the GM node that we've configured. Each of the, uh, the downstream nodes would need uh, some of its own PTP configuration, so they would need to be running their own PTP4L instance. If they were Starling X nodes, you'd do that in the same way, as well as a PHC2Sys instance to ensure that their system time is uh, synced and accurate. So once you have your, uh, your Starling X node set up and PTP is, is all configured, um, on the operational side, you, you care about monitoring and alarming to make sure that if you uh, lose your GNSS signal or, or some other issue uh, occurs, that you've got some way to uh, become aware of it and address it. So Starling X provides support for monitoring and raising alarms for several types of faults. It tracks the loss of GNSS signal. Uh, it monitors the offset between an incoming clock source and the system time. So if you're running a Starling X node as a, a downstream PTP4L uh, client. Uh, it'll compare the incoming timestamps to the local, to its own system time, and if there's a too high of a skew there, it'll throw an alarm for that. Um, it also tracks the one pulse per second signal between various NICs, if you've got those configured. And in Starling X, that's all viewable through the FM alarm list command. And these alarms are all great and useful, but they're definitely more of kind of systems administration and operations focus. They're not that information isn't uh, available that way to, say, containerized applications that are running on Starling X. So for that, um, we have a containerized application called PTP Notification. And this is used uh, to provide uh, alerts and updates to containerized applications running uh, on Kubernetes in, in Starling X. And Sorry. <laughs> um, 
the it runs as a, a system managed application, so it uh, is basically as simple as as just uploading a tarball in Starling X and and telling the system to apply it. And once that starts up, it uh, tracks the PTP state in the same manner that I described with the alarming before. But it provides a uh, a REST API for uh, user applications that they can query to get all of that same information. Um, and user applications can also use the subscription system, so they can subscribe to, say, what's the GP uh, GPS state on the system, and they'll receive a push notification uh, any time that there's a change to that state. In order to facilitate uh, user applications uh, connecting with the, the PTP notification application, we provide a client sidecar image that uh, users can uh, download and use. So when they download the notification client container and deploy it as a sidecar alongside their application, uh, it provides a, a very simple REST API that um, saves them from having to implement it themselves. So their application can just make some basic uh, get requests to set up a subscription or to query any of the system timing states on demand, however they, they choose, to, uh, choose to use it. So you can kind of have both approaches where you're able to receive push notifications if there's a change in the state, but also maybe on first time startup, you want your application to run a bunch of get requests to get all the, the immediate states of, uh, of the timing on the system. And that's mainly important, especially in 5G applications, so that things like uh, radio units can decide if the timing has degraded, do they need to stop their operation, do they need to hand off to another, another radio, um, things like that. So uh, future work, there's a, a lot of uh, ongoing development uh, related to PTP and Starling X. Um, one of the big features that we're continuing to uh, build out is support for synchronous ethernet, which is a protocol that allows the one pulse per second transmissions to be delivered uh, over ethernet connections rather than just using the SMA ports that are really only supported within a server. So you'll be able to transmit that same in information over the network and keep all of your nodes uh, tightly locked to the same one pulse per second signal. We're also looking at exploring various high availability configurations, um, as well as providing the ability to fail over uh, and fail back from one clock source to another. So you might have multiple GPS antennas on a, on a server, or you may have a, G a GPS antenna and a connection to a backhaul network with a lower priority that you want to be able to pick up in the event that you lose signal. And there's also always ongoing work to validate uh, PTP support for additional NIC types from, from other hardware manufacturers. And in addition to that, I'll just mention this was mostly telco focused, but PTP has a lot of applications outside of that in industrial automation, uh, electrical services, uh, financial trading. So if anybody in the community has experience in those areas and wants to talk about uh, how PTP can be used to that, we've really tried to keep the Starling X approach very open and flexible so that we can uh, integrate with, with other, uh, other requirements uh, very easily. And that takes me to the end of my presentation. If you're interested in, in talking about PTP, you can reach out on the mailing list. I'm gonna be at the Starling X booth uh, over the course of the, the conference, so feel free to come and say hi. And uh, that's everything, thank you.